Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today for another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at a dual mode, dual band, dual PTT DMR radio from Retivis. This is the RT52 and I've got everything out of the box in front of me here. We're going to be doing the sort of newer style video where I give you much more uh, information about the radio, like the features and benefits of the radio, um, and uh, rather than just like doing an unboxing bit by bit. So we're going to be looking at this radio today. What we'll do is we'll have a look at what you get. We'll look at the uh, menus inside. We'll have a brief look at programming. But as I said in my previous video, I'm not going to cover programming in any great detail because all DMR programming is very similar. There's not um, not a lot of differences, and the same goes for this Retivis radio. Um, you know, it's the same as the other ones I've reviewed in terms of the programming. It's, it's very straightforward and very similar to the other radios that I've done. So as I say, this one uh, has a dual PTT feature to it, so it's got an A and B VFO PTT. It's dual band for VHF and UHF, and it's dual mode, uh, meaning that it's both DMR and analog. So I've got everything um, opened out of the box in front of me here, and what you get is a uh, power supply there that plugs into the wall, and um, that uh, allows you to plug that into the charging base to charge the radio. We've got the um, obligatory wrist strap there, should you need one. We've also got a user manual. This is quite a thick user manual. It's in English um, and it's got basically everything in there, all about the settings. It's got specifications, functions, um, everything about CTCSS, colour codes, slots, all that sort of stuff in there. Um, so quite, quite straightforward. We've got a programming cable and the software disk. Now the software is available from Retivis' website, the resources page. There'll be a link in the description for that. And you'll see this cable is a standard Kenwood style cable, the two pin one. So very, very similar to, well, the same as a lot of other Retivis radios, apart from the IP67 ones, which use the Motorola style one, um, obviously, because it's waterproof. We've got a belt clip here, a plastic belt clip. Now, there's a point of difference with this. This goes onto the um, battery itself rather than on the back of the radio. So there's grooves on the back of the battery there, and the belt clip just slides into place, as you can see. Um, so with a lot of radios you get out of China, the belt clip is screwed to the radio body itself. This actually clips to the battery. Um, which is slightly different. Um, we've got a 2200 milliamp hour lithium ion battery there, 7.4 volt battery there. Um, it's quite high capacity really for radio batteries, so that's going to give you some decent time um, on standby and uh, equally um, quite good time on operation as well. We've got an antenna here, which is a 400 to 470 and a 136 to 174 rubber duck style antenna there, which just screws into the top of the radio. We've got the charging base. Which takes a which takes the 12 volt power supply, and that um, delivers an output of 7.4 volts, a 300 milliamp milliamp hour battery to charge the battery, and then finally we've got the radio body itself. Okay, so some of the features um, that this radio packs, as I said, it's a dual band DMR radio. It covers 400 to 470 megahertz on UHF and 136 to 174 megahertz on VHF. It does have that dual PTT feature, so the top PTT is VFOA and the bottom PTT is VFOB. And if you don't fancy using that, you can program the secondary PTT as a function button, so it will do um, any other function um, that the radio will allow uh, other than PTT. So you don't have to have the dual PTT there, but it's handy. And that's useful if you've got a couple of groups or you want to use two frequencies simultaneously, you can switch between A and B um, VFOs rather than switching um, channels, so it just makes things slightly easier should you need it. Um, it's a uh, high power radio at 5 watts, low power at 1 watt. It's got the 2200 milliamp power high capacity battery, um, 4000 channels, 250 zones, which allow 16 channels per zone. You can SMS on this radio, um, so you've got more options for communication there. Should you, If you don't want to use voice, you can send uh, messages over DMR. It's got the LCD screen there, which is 1.8 inches, and you'll notice it's black. So a lot of the other DMR radios that are out there, uh, the screen is blue. They all look quite the same, but this one is black, so it's quite nice. Um, you know, if you're using this at night, uh, you haven't got the glare of a screen. Um, equally, it's, um, it operates just as well in the day. It's fully PC programmable and the software upgrades and firmware upgrades that go onto the Retivis website all the time and those are free for life so if you um, buy this radio and you want to upgrade the firmware then you can do for free and um, as and when things are released they go straight on the resources page on the Retivis website. It's got GPS function so you can query the location of a radio um, and it's got things like emergency alert, Vox, power save, talk around, remote kill and remote stun and uh, revive, 
timeout timer, squelch control, and then finally another radio that's got lone worker mode. Now I have covered this in other videos, but basically in layman's terms, lone worker mode is a sort of safety measure that these DMR radios have. So if I'm out and I get into difficulty, or I collapse, or I'm unconscious, or I'm injured, or attacked, and my radio isn't active for a predetermined amount of time, the radio will send out an alarm. And if I don't silence that alarm by either turning the volume up and down, or pressing the button, or pressing the PTT, my radio will then key up, and those who are on the same talk group, or those who are monitoring, or a control room, will hear my basically my radio keying up, and will hear what's going on in the background. And it might be that I've not heard the alarm and you can hear me talking or, or whatever or they might hear nothing or they might hear me being attacked or something like that. And it's just basically allows um, someone to be on their own. It just has that, it, it's that last little safety measure um, and you know, the, the radio will, will stay keyed up until it's um, recovered or until the battery dies. But the idea is that they can um, come and find you and um, locate that radio. And see what's happened to you so yeah someone asked me to cover lone worker mode in in the comments so yeah that's basically what lone worker mode is if i don't use my radio it will alarm and if i don't silence the alarm it will then key up so others on the network can hear what's going on and um come to my aid should i be in danger so that's the that's a main overview of the features on this radio okay so just a look at the radio itself there you can see it's um, similar to the retivis rt83 uh, on the back there you can see we've got the 5 watt power set in there um, and it's just got some information about the frequencies that this radio covers. Assembly is straightforward, the battery just slides into the top there and you'll see it pushes into place at the bottom and there's a clip on the bottom of the radio which just locks the battery into place. You can see that belt clip on the back there, that's just slid into place and then the antenna just screws into the SMA slot on the top. And it's as straightforward as that to set it up. Okay, so you can see there we've got the uh, we've got the welcome screen there, and the, the screen is is easy to see. Even I've got studio lights, you can see them in the reflection there. As I say, we'll just turn them off, and I've I've got it set to uh, go off after a few seconds. But you can see there the screen is nice and bright. Okay, so on the front of the radio, you can see we've got the speaker and microphone at the top. We've got the LCD screen and a rubberized keypad. On the left hand side we've got those two PTT buttons and we've got a programmable function button in the middle which you can set that, you can actually set that from the radio or from the programming software. And as I said if you don't want to use both PTTs you don't have to. On the back there's obviously the belt clip and on this side we've got the speaker mic cover there which um, hides the port and that's basically the Kenwood style programming port. And then on the top we've got a emergency button, another programmable button. Um, an LED indicator, we've got the on and off and volume switch and we've got the channel select knob as well. So this radio is fully programmable from the front end so you can set things like whether you want an analog or a DMR channel, you can set your talk groups, you can set your contacts, you can set your slot, your colour code, your shift, uh, your plus or minus, CTCSS, DCS, Basically, you can fully program this from the front end of the radio, um, a little bit like the Alunz HD1, which is you know, really handy for DMR radios now that you don't have to rely on a code plug. I, I've actually not programmed this yet. I've just been using it from the front end. When we do our radio test in a little while, I'm going to um, set that up just from the front end and transmit back to base um, like so. So if we just look in the menus, you can see we've got radio settings there. We've got CT, CSS and DCS, squelch, transmit power, talk around, band, busy lock, timeout timer, vox, double weight, power save, beep, backlight, keypad lock, indicator, password lock, screen and language. Um, on radio info, we've got the ID, which I haven't set up yet. Um, and we've got uh, device info, which gives you the version and the version of the firmware that you're on. We've got radio config, so you can select the receive frequency, the transmit frequency, the channel name, the colour code, the slot, the shift frequency, shift direction, frequency step, channel type, so that's analog or DMR, so fully programmable from the front. Um, you can set your key functions there for the um, secondary PTT, um, the middle button and the top button, and that's it for the settings on the front. You can select your zones there, there's only two zones programmed in this radio at the moment, um, but you can obviously add more zones and then we've got appendix, we've got GPS, so you can switch that on and off. You can select your time zone 
and you can view your GPS there, which obviously I'm not going to do on screen. And we've got time calibrate, so you can manually adjust the time or use GPS, GPS to adjust the time. And that's that's basically it for settings. It, it, it's just so straightforward to program from the front end, as I say, um, and it, it just allows you that little bit of flexibility. If you're out in the field or out and about and you don't have your laptop and your co-plug and your programming cable nearby, um, you can rest assured that you can program the radio straight from the front. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go out, we're going to do a quick test on this, um, we'll, we'll pick a spot a few miles away, we'll transmit back to base, and um, we'll see how the radio performs. Okay, so I've come out with the RT52 now. Um, I'm going to do two tests. The first one, um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's actually going to work. I'm about six miles from home. And as you can see from the couple of clips I've shown you, um, it's quite hilly round here. Um, so the terrain is up and down. So my QTH is actually over that way, um, behind those transmitter towers, um, behind a hill. Um, and I'm sort of in really like rough terrain all around here. There's hills and... Um, all sorts of stuff going on so i'm going to put a call back to uh, the base station uh, the base station's in aor dv1 digital scanner um, which is set to dmr at the moment obviously on a co-linear on the roof of the house and i've just got the radio here with its stock antenna so we'll see if we can get back to base uh, this is m3 hhy m3 hhy testing the retivis rt52 at location one uh, for a terrain test one two three four five five four three two one m3 hhy mobile Okay, we'll just try one more. M3 HHY, M3 HHY, testing from location one. Um, six, six or seven miles from home for a terrain test. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one on the Retivis RT52. Okay, so I'm not, not gonna hold out much hope for that test. Um, as I say, we are quite far away and the terrain um, leaves a lot to be desired. HHY, M3 HHY, testing the Retivis RT52 at location one uh, for a terrain test. One two three four five five four three two one. M three H H Y mobile. M three H H Y M three H H Y testing from location one. Um, six six or seven. Five four three two one on the Retivis R T fifty two. But we'll go to point two now. We'll do a little bit of an urban range test and see um, how it performs. Okay, so we're back at a location I did in a recent video, which has got the mobile phone transmitter, those of you who remember it. I'm not going to get out of the car because there's too much road noise. Um, we're on like a major road here, um, so there's just far too much noise. Now, as I said in the uh, in the other video, this place is a couple of miles from home, but again, there's a hill in between us. I'll put the terrain on the screen there, um, but we'll just transmit back to base now and see, uh, see how well we get back. I don't anticipate any problems at all. This is M3HHY Mobile testing the Retivis RT52. At location two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And just one more. This is M3HHY, M3HHY mobile testing UHF DMR simplex from location two, around three to four miles from home on the Retivis RT52. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. This is M3HHY mobile testing the Retivis RT52. At location two, uh, one two three four five five four three two one. HHY and three HHY mobile testing UHF DMR simplex from location around three to four miles from home on the rest of this RT fifty two one two three five four three two one. Okay, what we're going to do now is just go to one final location and we'll do a couple of calls from there and then we'll uh, conclude the test. Okay, so we're at the final spot now, point three. Wernerthlow, a place that I've covered in tons and tons of videos. Um, I'll just show you some shots of the view from up here. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so as I've said before, uh, the takeoff uh, to that direction is really good across Manchester, Lancashire, into North Wales, Merseyside, all those areas, down into Cheshire, even to Staffordshire. But 
I live and my receiving stations are behind this big chunk of earth you see here in the foreground um, so not an ideal spot to get back to home now I've just got out of the car and it's pretty windy and it's absolutely freezing it's hovering around zero so I'm just gonna do this quick uh, test from inside the car I've done tests from here um, before and all the roof of the car is all glass anyway so shouldn't um, act as a Faraday cage uh, too much and really affect the uh, the test so here goes this is M3HHY from Werner's Low at point three on the Retivis RT52 on UHF 12345 54321 M3HHY Mobile Okay, I'll just do one more M3 <coughs> M3HHY Mobile M3HHY Mobile at point 3 Werner's Low on UHF DMR Simplex 12345 54321 on the Retivis RT52. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll drive back home and we'll uh, listen to the audio and I'll show you the results that we got. This is M3HHY from Werner Flow at point three on the Retivis RT52 on UHF 12345 54321 M3HHY Mobile. M3 M3HHY Mobile, M3HHY Mobile at point 3 we're in a slow on UHF DMR Simplex 12345-54321 on the Retivis RT52. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this short review of the Retivis RT52. I'm sure you'll agree it's a quite a nice radio. I'm a big fan of the uh, usual things that Retifis are bringing out, i.e. the programming from the front end, which I think is a really uh, strong selling point now for any of these radios that are being released. Um, I like the dark screen as well, the, the sort of covert style screen. Definitely easier on the eyes and makes a, a welcome change from the usual blue of most other DMR radios that are knocking around. Uh, GPS is an added bonus and um, the dual PTT is a nice idea as well for, you know, should you want to, talk on two frequencies um you know and you don't want to keep changing channel you've got the option of using that dual ptt and it's nice that you can reprogram it so it's not a ptt as well um which is good uh, range was um range test was pretty good as well from uh, the areas we were at um just a point to note i did i did put it in the video but a point to note is the there is some minor distortion on the audio and that's just me talking too close to the microphone uh, that's the only reason why why that is so you can hear like pff, pff, pff. that's basically me just talking like far too close to the microphone um so uh, that's my bad but yeah quite a good radio quite happy with it looking forward to having a bit more of a play around with it and doing some more testing um so yeah if you want to buy the radio links are in the description below if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you have any comments suggestions or questions drop them in the box below and i'll get back to you and if you haven't already subscribed then make sure you click the subscribe button Okay guys, thanks for watching, we'll catch you in the next one, 7-3 for now.